Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 321 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine. And here's the latest war update. The Russian military is claiming that they've successfully captured the mining town of Solodar. Now, the Ukrainian military hasn't confirmed this yet, but I've seen the pictures online of the Wagner mercenaries in the center of the town. So unless this is a trap, more than likely this information is correct. When we go on deepstatemap.live, uh, it has not been updated yet to reflect the Russians taking the town of Solodar. And the situation just got too difficult for the Ukrainian defenders in that town. The Wagner mercenaries had been pushing and pushing and they were surrounding the town on three sides. From the south, the east, and the north. The only way in or out was this small road that was being continuously shelled. So if the 500 or so Ukrainian defenders in the town couldn't be resupplied with food, water, and ammunition, it is in the best interest of the Ukrainian forces to fall back. And the Ukrainians have prepared for this possibility. They've already constructed new defense lines on the other side of this stream that goes north-south. So let's now pause for a moment and zoom out and consider everything that's been happening in this region. So this is the Donbass region. Here's the city of Bakhmut. And the Russian military, for 10 months, has been kicking in their own teeth trying to take the city of Bakhmut. And I think the publicity that Prigozhin and the Wagner Group were getting the last month or so was getting really negative, their failures to take Bakhmut. So Prigozhin moved the goalpost and changed his objectives and stated, well, let's focus all of our attention and manpower on taking the mining town of Solidar. But let's, let's once again put this in perspective. Let's change the dates on the calendar and go back one month. How far did the Wagner mercenaries and the Russian military advance over the last 30 or so days? Here's the scale down here. This is two kilometers. So they went from here to the mining town of Solidar, and over 30 days, they only advanced about three kilometers. So the stated objective of the Russian military is to capture the entire Donbass region, they would need the entire Donetsk Oblast. So at the rate of three kilometers advancing every month, uh, how much longer could this war take for the Russians? And they need to go another 95 kilometers. So at three a month, that's a little over 30 a year. We're looking at another three years of slow advances. Uh, and I don't think the Russians are going to have the artillery or bodies in order to continue their current rate of loss. So this is what madness looks like as Russia intensifies their attacks on the city of Bakhmut. Here is a quote from President Zelensky's address to the nation last night. What did Russia want to gain there? Everything is completely destroyed. There is almost no life left. Thousands of their people were lost. The whole land near Solidar is covered with the corpses of occupiers and scars from strikes. This is what madness looks like. So let me share with you a 30 second clip. Uh, this is, there are still civilians who have refused to evacuate, but I think almost every civilian is out of Bakhmut now. But let's watch 30 seconds of what the city of Bakhmut currently looks like. <laughs> It's just horrific what the Russians have done. Here is a before and after picture. This is what the city of Bakhmut looked like before the Russians came. And this is what the city of Bakhmut looks like now. 
This is the Russian world. This is what Russia defines as winning, as victory, destroying every square inch of an entire city, depopulating it, and then, I guess, raising a flag. I don't know. Here's an update from Butasov. He is a journalist embedded with the forces in Bakhmut, and I want, I want to read his update from yesterday. Our troops do everything possible, and some units do the impossible. Several paratroopers of the 46th Air, Air Mobile Brigade got frostbite. One of the fighters will have 10 toes amputated tomorrow, as they fight for many days in the cold and remain in their positions until the last. The brigade is controlled and motivated. Many fighters discovered or significantly increased the number of destroyed enemies on their personal account. Artillery on 105 millimeter guns works very accurately. Not everyone and not everything goes well. But we will talk about the problems later. Now it is important that we have significant forces and all the opportunities to act in accordance with the situation. So let's check in with our favorite Cossack defenders still holding the city of Bakhmut. This once again is about 8 kilometers south from Solidar. And we've got a joint update from both Witch and Kianan. And uh, Witch's real name is Olga, which is her call sign. And this is the first video where Kianan has shown his face. Normally he, uh, he covers up his mouth and nose. The update is a little over three minutes long, so I'm going to probably cut this to about 90 seconds. I'll link the entire video in a pinned comment down below if you want to check it out. My welcome, Ukraine. Today, we are with my fighting brother, my good friend Kiyanin. Let's say a few words about Bakhmut. I want to tell you that the defense of Bakhmut is the same as the Ukrainian will to freedom, as our desire to justice and to democracy. Ми боремося не лише за Україну, ми боремося за права народу, ми боремося за наше існування, за нашу історію. І ми захищаємо зараз Європу від цього страшного сусіда, свавільного, який абсолютно нахерований, який не жаліє свій, свій народ і своїх воїнів, і поплюжить нашу землю. Пару слів від киянина, будь ласка. А, друзі, дуже приємно, що нарешті... Весь світ зрозумів, що відбувається в Україні, що це не відкритий геноцид українського народу. Тому кожен, хто сюди прийшов, ми взагалі добровольчий підрозділ, і хлопці мотивовані. До нас там багато в тіктоці людей пишуть, хочуть попасти служити. Але я вам скажу так, ми не СБУ, ми не міліція, ми не прокуратура, ми не ДБР, куди можна попасти за хабарі. До нас можна попасти тільки по особистим якостям, і то не всім. Це так, щоб було зрозуміло. А взагалі, а за Бахмут не хвилюйтесь, тут доста є навчених підрозділів, які знають свою справу, і калібрована піхота. То, що вони там постійно в своїх телеграм-каналах і на ресурсах захватують, то вони вже захватують, тут ми вже з літа надивилися, наслухалися на цей бред. За мільйон разів. Не хвилюйтеся, бо ми це Україна. Від себе хочу лише додати одне. Росіянам і російському командуванню дуже важко збагнути. Взагалі рівень довіри в українському війську, в силах оборони між командирами та підлеглими. І рівень нашої мотивації. Тому дуже важко нас налякати закликами до того, щоб ми здавалися, що нас спалять, що нас поплюжать. Ми через це пройшли вже Більше як 500 років. Ми знаємо, на що здати наш ворог. І ми знаємо, як його побороти. Тож слава Україні! Героям слава! Absolutely incredible that everyone in their brigade is a volunteer, and they have high standards. There are people messaging them saying, I want to fight in your units, I want to go to Bakhmut and help you defend the city. And they're saying, no, you can't even bribe your way in. We only accept the best in order to hold this town on the front lines. It's, it's inspiring. Meanwhile, who are they squared up against? And they're facing conscripts, men being 
forced against their will to fights, literal literal prisoners being taken from jail and sent to the front lines to die. And I have two clips here that I will link in a pinned comment down below. Because of YouTube's policies, I obviously can't show this kind of violence. But I myself, with my own eyes, have seen thousands of Russian men killed in the last month charging into Bakhmut and Solidar uh, as the Ukrainian defenders there continue to hold. So if you want to see what this uh, horrendous violence looks like, once again, I'll pin these down below. But let's put this victory that Russia just achieved in, in, in perspective here. The pre-war population of Solidar was about 10,000 people. But Bakhmut is seven times larger at 70,000 people. And in order for Russia to achieve its stated objective of getting all of the Donbass region, they're eventually going to have to somehow gain control of Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, a combined population of about 270,000 people. If the Wagner Group can just barely take Solidar, and have yet to proven they can take Bakhmut, how are they ever going to get Kramatorsk and Slovyansk? This just isn't going to happen. Oh, and by the way, two months ago, they surrendered and gave up the city of Kherson, which had a pre-war population close to 300,000 people. So as soon as they take 30 Solidar towns, that will make up just for the losses they incurred two months ago by giving up the city of Kherson. So once again, I just want to put it in perspective, but Russian media, Russian propaganda, Russian trolls are going to claim that Solidar is some huge victory because they got a salt mine. So here we are on Russian state TV, and they're just honestly admitting that, yeah, we needed to do something to boost morale. Our military hasn't achieved much in the last six or seven months, and we need a propaganda and morale victory. Ну, то есть война на истощение объявлена Российской Федерацией, но сложно не заметить, как истощаются абсолютно все. В этой связи мяч на нашей стороне. Нужно форсировать события. Да никто не сомневается, что мы истощаемся. Истощаемся, возможно, в первую очередь. Еще раз. Поэтому говорю, нужно форсировать события. Очень ждем позитивных, радостных новостей из-под Солидара, из-под Бахмута, в том числе для поднятия морально-психологического боевого, в том числе нашего духа. Does that seem like a good idea for Russia to be declaring this a war of attrition with Ukraine when Ukraine is being aided and helped by over 50 countries with pretty significantly large economies? Meanwhile, Russia's only real military allies are Syria, Iran, and North Korea. And the, uh, the wear and tear of the Russian military is beginning to show. Russian artillery fire is down nearly 75%, according to U.S. officials, in latest sign of struggles for Moscow. So I'll go ahead and read you the quoted uh, numbers here. This is what it looks like. U.S. and Ukrainian officials have offered widely different estimates of Russian fire, with U.S. officials saying the rate has dropped from 20,000 artillery rounds a day to only now 5,000 on average. Meanwhile, Ukrainians were saying that it went from 60,000 to 20,000. So what is the true number? It doesn't really matter. Both of those numbers are showing a 70 to 75 percent drop in Russia's ability to engage and conduct their war. They're not running out of artillery, they're just running low on artillery. If you want to fully understand ammunition shortages in Ukraine, I highly recommend this video from Perun, friend of the channel, and he gives a one hour and eight minute PowerPoint presentation perfectly explaining uh, the artillery shortages. And uh, the bottom line up front, Russia's never going to run out of artillery. They have factories every day making more but they're no longer going to be able to fire at the rate they want to conduct this war or advance like they were doing six or seven months ago when they took the cities of Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. 
So let's now check in with how this uh, mobilization might be going, potentially happening later this month. And here is a military colonel on Russian state TV saying, this next wave of mobilization should have happened yesterday. So here's a Russian military commander on Kremlin State TV saying we need to indoctrinate all children in our schools now to prepare them for the future wars, to prepare them for continuous war with everyone they want to be at war with. And this is a very disturbing clip. I'm only going to play a couple seconds of this. If you want to watch it, once again, I'll link it in a pinned comment down below. But this is the current level of indoctrination and brainwashing that all children in Russia are experiencing when they go to school. Yeah, that's very difficult for me to watch, but Putin has gone all in on reconstituting the Russian Empire, the Soviet Empire. These are the historical borders that Vladimir Putin wants back for his empire. Finland doesn't exist. Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, most of Poland, all of Moldova, part of Romania, the Caucasus, um, Kazakhstan. Russia's all in. Uh, they've completely uh, psychologically uh, changed over their population and said, we're going back to our glory days. We want our 1914 borders uh, reinstalled. Uh, give us back these territories or else we don't feel safe. I mean, this is all so absurd. This is never going to work. But this is what Vladimir Putin has committed his people to. And he's, he's basically committed his people to committing suicide. But for Ukraine, there's not much of a choice. Here's a quote from Ukraine's ambassador to the United States. It's either fight and liberate Ukraine or die. And we choose not to die. And I want to address this uh, pro Kremlin propaganda talking point. Uh, Russian bots in the comments section, they repeat this often. But they say NATO is willing to fight Russia to the last Ukrainian, as if it's NATO's fault that Ukrainians are dying by fighting this war. If NATO stopped assisting and helping Ukraine, one, Ukraine would continue to fight. They just wouldn't have as many resources. But let's say that Ukraine at this point laid down their arms and surrendered their country to the Russians, and they just accepted that they would be living under Russian military occupation for years or decades as Russia pushes all of their borders to rebuild their empire, more than likely force conscripting Ukrainians to then go fight in the Baltics, to go fight in Poland for Vladimir Putin. And I argue many more Ukrainians would die under that scenario in which Ukraine gave Russia everything they wanted today. And this might be the most disturbing phone conversation that I've, I've seen. A lot of these are very horrifying. But in this intercepted call published by Ukraine's intelligence service, a Russian soldier admits to crimes against civilians during their retreat from the city of Liman answering his friend's question about the presence of young, attractive women in the area, he says there are none since they were all killed by the retreating Russian military.
меня, а что за окна? Всех выебли и убили, нахуй. Мы когда лиман сдавали, там всех повырезали, нахуй. Хохлы ее там, блядь. Насиловали, резали, там, нахуй, расстреливали, блядь. Повырезали, нахуй. В лимане, в Торском, всех, нахуй, просто шли, расстреливали. Всех мужиков, нахуй, кто помоложе, забирали к себе туда. А этих, короче, баб, вот этих молодых, всех ебли, резали, их расстреливали, нахуй. So this is what Ukraine is fighting for. This is what the Russian military is. This, I'm sad to say, is who the Russian people are today, where uh, their military, once again, this is the Russian-speaking, supposedly ethnic Russian part of Ukraine. They abducted all of the young men to force them into service or force them into labor, and they just killed all of the young women when they retreated from this area. So as an American, I'm incredibly proud to be helping defeat this ultimate evil in the world. Here is a, an interesting uh, account from Ukraine battle map of the amount of money in uh, financial aid and military resources that the United States has been supplying to Ukraine. And here's another timeline of all of the vehicles that the United States has been introducing to Ukraine. When you factor in air defense systems or like the harm missiles, uh, the United States is every month introducing new weapon systems into the conflict with Ukraine. And this is what I think was the plan. I think G7 leaders, when this war first broke out, wanted to de-escalate and give Putin an off-ramp, give Putin a chance to remain in power as long as the Russian military just withdrew and gave up on their ambition to take over Ukraine. In hindsight, we now know that this was overly optimistic and this plan was never going to work. When Putin invaded Ukraine back in February, he had already made up his mind that he was willing to risk his own life and risk the future of his nation to at least take the Donbass region, at least secure the land bridge to Crimea. Putin probably still could take an off-ramp now if he wanted to, retreat his military back to his own borders, put his propaganda machine to work and say, well, we successfully killed a lot of Nazis, we made uh, the world safer for Russia, uh, let's now increase our domestic military production and prepare for the next war with the fascists. He could still stay alive and remain in power. But here we are 11 months later and this mofo hasn't taken any of the off-ramps. And I think G7 leaders, uh, specifically let's talk about Germany and France, are finally on the same page. That the only way to end this war is if the Ukrainian military can defeat and expel the Russian military. So the United States uh, has been taking lots of steps to make this happen. The United States will train Ukrainians on the Patriot Air System in Oklahoma as soon as next week. In Germany, the United States will start training a battalion worth of Ukrainian soldiers on the M2 Bradley system every single month. I know there's also about 30 Ukrainian pilots already in the United States training on F-16s. There's going to be a lot of leaps forward for the Ukrainian military in the next couple months. And the last piece of the puzzle that Ukraine needs is tanks, and France and Poland are pushing Germany to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine. And it, Germany doesn't even need to send tanks. Germany just has to give permission for other countries to send tanks. So when you look around Europe, how many Leopard 2 tanks are there? And there's over 2,000 sitting in EU inventories. And if Germany can just give permission, then maybe countries like Finland, Poland, Spain, maybe even Canada would be willing to chip in and start donating Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine. I think uh, there's a meeting for NATO coming up later this month in Germany. Russia might have already mobilized or begun mobilizing their next round of soldiers by then. Germany could say, because Russia continues to escalate, the only way for this war to end is for Ukraine to defeat the Russians on the battlefield. So 
Tanks are coming soon. Uh, we will have that update when it occurs. Final couple feel-good clips I have for you. The first one is, uh, how does a Ukrainian defender start their morning? Never stop, I'll get it if I want it. Gotta make to myself a promise. I won't quit, keep going till I got it. I won't give up till I'm on top Yo, no, I ain't the type to give up. If I do something, man, I do it till I get what I want. I turn a business out of nothing into something I love. I got a poker face, but honestly, I'm not one to bluff. I flip a switch, never miss, man, I always stay up. Don't let him see you, bitch. He looks ready to go. Final clip I have for you is of a Ukrainian combat mouse that joined this unit uh, in this trench. The Russians don't stand a chance. That's all for this update video. Glory to the heroes, glory to Ukraine. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.